Subnautica had some really weird stuff going on in early access that a lot of people don't know about. So, let's take a look. Hey there, I'm Aki, and these are six weird things from Subnautica's past. I actually think some of these coming back for Subnautica 2 would be really cool. Let me know if you agree. The current generator, for example, was a placeable that would push anything in front of it away, and could be a really cool way of getting rid of any creatures pursuing you to your base. Of course, you could also use it to trap fish in a cave or something similar before the graph trap was a thing. People stack these to giant walls that would basically make approaching it impossible for anything in the water. If I remember correctly, not even a seamoth could get to it because it would just get pushed away, but it didn't really have any utility or real use. Alright, it turns out I was wrong. The seamoth and cyclops were unaffected, but you could push your live pod anywhere you wanted, and even move reef bags with this. And a really creative use case I found, in like an age old reddit thread, is to use it to pop out crash fish from their homes, to get crash powder more easily. Genius! I get why they removed it, since besides being fun to play around with, it just didn't do anything. But I think you could make it a useful tool in Subnautica 2, if you design some gameplay around it. For example, what if you could use it to push open collapsed cave entrances that your repulsion cannon is not strong enough to do. Or you could use it to create a current to transfer nutrients from one biome to another to help the plants grow. That would probably require a way more advanced biome system, but hey, who knows? Something that was never or will ever be useful though, was the flat aurora. Back in the pre-alpha, even before early access, the aurora was just a flat image plopped onto the horizon to give you a point of reference and story reasons, I assume? But the devs quickly figured out that people were really interested in it. They actually had stats tracking basically anything players did in Subnautica. From which base pieces were most used, to where they placed their bases, what they picked up, what they ate, and where they went. And they saw that people really tried to get to that Aurora PNG. We track every single item the players craft, every single base piece they build, every single submarine they build, everything. That's actually why they implemented a 3D model for the crash ship in the first place and made it explorable. It's really weird to think about what Subnautica would be like if we never did have that and the row was just still a flat picture. Oh, that's, that's weird. Next thing though, I'm actually glad is gone because it was very annoying and I do not want to have it back like ever. Durability or knives. <laughs> I don't know if this was just knives or also other tools, but I definitely remember the knife durability. That's because just after the repo was added, I tried making a video about killing it. I think I was actually the first person to do that. Um, I, I went through about eight knives, I think, which also had higher durability than the standard survival knife because I used diamond knives, an upgrade which also existed back then. Yeah, they do not need to bring that back, thank you. <laughs> but an idea I really wish they revisited is procedurally generated terrain. Yep, you heard that right. If you didn't know, they did plan for Subnautica to have a procedurally generated map that would change every time you loaded the game. The only remnant of that is that your life pod placements are somewhat random, but also not completely, there's just a bunch of preset life pod spawns and it chooses one at random. They already created several tiles for different biomes that would spawn in random arrangements, like the safe shadow tiles. There were tiles in different sizes and even unique tiles, like the giant mushroom tree and the lava castle. We did get a handcrafted map in the end, I assume because it would make it easier to tell a story and make sure things are where they're supposed to be, and it's greater for details, easter eggs and making the player follow the story better. But I think Subnauka 2 having a second game mode with a procedurally generated map for higher replayability would be awesome. I still do think we should have a manually crafted map for the main story mode, but I don't see any reason to have a more replayable game mode with procedurally generated terrain. It wouldn't even have to be tiles. It can be completely procedurally generated, if they could pull that off. It's just about switching it up for a second and third playthrough, so the game doesn't get boring as quickly. Imagine if precursor bases also had procedural layouts with different rooms you would have to get through that could spawn in all kinds of arrangements. Basically like a world puzzle from other games. Wouldn't that be awesome? A procedural terrain system also opens up a bunch of possibilities for new exploration equipment and vehicles. I mean, if there is a completely randomly generated map, 
Sometimes there's a need for big huge submarines to traverse big open spaces and sometimes you need a small agile submarine to go through a bunch of complicated cave systems. I think it would be really cool to have something like that. That could even tie into a customizable submarine kind of deal, but I might make a separate video about that in the future in case you guys are interested. And if we can control world generation to some extent, it will make for basically infinite replayability. Imagine we can control the bottom of the ocean. Say, do we want the ocean to go to 100 meters, 200 meters, 1000 meters? Do we want a lot of dangerous biomes to spawn? Do we want a lot of safe biomes to spawn? Something like that would be awesome. Let me know if you have any other ideas for this in the comments. Something more funny than interesting, but I still wanted to include, is that the sea dragon used to have an animation for swallowing the sea moth. At first you might be wondering why that was removed since, I mean, yeah, I, it does look pretty cool. But then you realize uh, the sea moth can't go to the lava zone. <laughs> its maximum crush depth is 900 meters at maximum. And the lava zone starts at 900 meters. So this animation is completely useless. You'll never get your sea moth in there unless you transport it with a cyclops. But even then, it'll get destroyed basically instantly. So yeah, it makes sense why they removed it. I just, I like the animation. Okay, but let's talk about signals. Nowadays, when you get a signal, it's added to its own page in the PDA and you can toggle it on or off and even change the color. But back in early access, signals were actual physical items. You had to put them on one of the slots on your head, which they shared with the compass and thermometer. Yes, there was a thermometer, but it was basically useless, so it got removed. I mean, all it basically did was tell you where you can place a thermal plant most efficiently, and all of those spots are usually pretty obvious. But the signal being an item meant you had to sacrifice inventory slots to carry them around. When you dropped them, they would just show up as a floating X. And if you died shortly after picking one up, you just lost the signal. Permanently. So I'm very happy they changed this. I don't think they should bring this back. But I do think they could do something interesting with signals in Subnautica 2. Maybe some signals could have to be decoded in some sort of minigame or a research station while others aren't as accurate and only give you a rough location. Maybe if you make a mistake during the decoding process, it could actually show you a wrong location, or maybe not be as accurate as it would have been if you hadn't made any mistakes. I think that could be pretty cool. Then again, we don't even know if there will be signals in Subnautica 2, we know basically nothing about it so far. I just think if it's anything like Subnautica, that could be a cool little gameplay loop in the game. Do you know about any other weird facts from Subnautica's history? If so, let me know in the comments down below or on my Discord server. Yes, I do have a Discord server. Link is in the description. Come say hi. But for now, thank you very much for watching. And as always, I'll see you next time. Goodbye!